Rocky Sashi's Tea House. Come and welcome to San. It's Gray from Rocky Sashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you Genki? I'm pretty good, thank you. I've got a new review and it's a brand new issue. It's a brand new Batman comic. What? Another Batman comic? Can you believe it? I know, right? This is Batman Fortress. Now, it's part one of, I'm not sure if it's six or eight, and it's been written by one of the writers of Rogue One, the Star Wars movie. It's um, a guy called Gary Witter, and the art is by Derek Robertson, who's probably most famous for his work on The Boys. You know, The Boys, the comic, Garth Ennis. And also, he did a lot of work with Warren, er- Warren Ellis in Transmetropolitan. So, yeah, good art, very distinctive style. Um, a little bit weird sometimes when you see Bruce Wayne, the way he draws Bruce. It's a very individual style that Robertson's got. And sometimes he looks like a character from The Boys. But still, I like his style. It's a nice, detailed style. And there's some really good panel breakdowns, some great use of you know the comic book form. So yeah, I'm going to show you some of the art inside in a minute. But this came out today. It's Wednesday, May 25th, 2022. It's came out for $3.99. So not bad. It's, it's a surprise for me, a DC comic, a number one, you know, issue one that's not like $4 or $5.99. So yeah. And what did I think of the issue? Do I recommend it? Well, To be honest, I like the artist, so I'm a fan of Robertson. I wanted to see what it's like. I like the way he draws Batman. His Bruce Wayne's a little bit weird, but yeah, the art is good. It's dark, sometimes it's a little bit sparse, but I like that. The writing is fine, okay, the writing's good, but there's a little bit too much of it. And you'll see that when I go through my story summary. You know, you can see a lot of dialogue balloons throughout the issue. And I find that the pages that worked the best were the ones with the least amount of dialogue, the ones which were just left to, you know, show the progression of the story through the images, through the comic book art. So, yeah, let me know what you think when you see the story summary. Now, I want to show a little bit of the art from inside. Where are we? It's this one here. So this is Derek Robertson's style. You know, if you've seen his work on the boys, you've got you'll have an idea what it's like. It's gritty, realistic. He's got a little bit of a distinctive style, but I really liked it, and I like the way he draws Batman. So yeah, it's recommend if you're you know looking for maybe a different kind of Batman story, one that's got Alfred in it, which is nice to see. There's the the Joker's in here, Penguins in here briefly, and. It's a lot of setup for what's going to come. So, yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more excitement, but you know, sometimes you need a slow issue to build things up, build the story, and we'll see how it goes from here. Okay, as usual, I'll do my short story summary and I'll show you some of the art inside. Okay, please keep watching. Here we go. We open to darkness. Gotham City's been hit by a blackout, cause unknown. Then we see Wayne Manor. Three thieves are about to rob it. What about the bat? Don't even say that word, it's bad luck. They make their way in via a window which was unlocked. And there's a great image here in the bottom panel. I love the perspective, the way it's kind of tilted to one side. And a great page here with much less dialogue and more action. Look at the images, the progression of the panels. One of the robbers gets grabbed. Vince, Vince, you're there. Be careful with those. They belong to my mother. Oh shit, that's Bruce Wayne. You said he was out of town. Then we get some great action panels here. Pam, he gets punched by Bruce. Then one of the robbers pulls a gun on him. And we hear from the background, if I may take the liberty, Master Bruce. And then look, is this Alfred? It's all in silhouette, so it's not really clear, but it suggests that it is. Don't forget, Alfred used to be in the SAS. We switch scenes to the rooftop of Gotham PD. And there's Harvey Bullock and Jim Gordon talking about getting the bat signal activated. Commissioner Gordon's wired some car batteries to it. They're going to see if it works. Then we learn that there's been a breakout from Arkham Asylum. With the power down, all the electronic locks were out. We just put Joker and Cobblepot back there last month. Come on, we need the signal. Damn it, light it up. And then we see the bat signal. It's working. Do you think he'll show? We need him. Now more than ever. Now let's pause a minute and just look at all this dialogue, look at all the balloons, look at all the words. That's a lot of dialogue. Now to be fair, it's well written but you can see the differences in the pages where it's just mainly focusing on the art and the action. You know, silent panels can sometimes say so much. But there's a lot going on here, there's a lot of writing. Next we get this really striking comic book page. Look at the panel breakdowns, look at the art here, it's so good. And compare it to the last page. There's very little dialogue on here, and it works so much better, I think. 
let me skip ahead to this page again. Great progression in the panels, great comic book art. Look at the way Batman's body shape is mirrored in the background by the bat. And you've also got the bat signal on the other side. It's, it's a great panel put together so well. Really good comic book art. So Batman goes to patrol the streets. There's rioting, of course, looting, cars are on fire. He's trying to stop the petty criminals from preying on the innocent. Then we switch to Gotham Harbour and we see somebody. Oh my god, it's Penguin, it's Cobblepot. He looks like he's strangling somebody in the ocean. Again, it's got a great tilted angle with the second panel there. And on the next page, here he is. We have to have him, the Joker. He's singing Alice Cooper's School's Out Forever. It's a great, great moment on the school bus. I mean, come on, he had to be on a school bus, didn't he, filled with children. You gotta be kidding me! He sees Batman in his headlights. Okay, let me show just one more page of brilliant comic book art. Look at the panel progression here. You've got Batman in crime alley. He's found somebody. It looks like he's murdered a couple. And Batman starts to lose control here. You can see he's taking this guy down and he knows it. He's losing control. You can hear he's like in a monologue. Then some cops catch him and they're saying, Oh crap, he's got to kill this guy. But he manages to stop. This page is a masterclass in comic book art by Derek Robertson. Okay, let me end my story summary here. So there we go, Batman Fortress issue one. What did you think? Did you like the art by Derek Robertson? How about the story? Intriguing, isn't it? Okay, please let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Now, let me share these two variant covers. This first one's by the main artist, Derek Robertson. What do you think? It's a great image showing Batman coming down into the city. You've got the buildings behind him, like above him, and there's a bat signal there. And there's one more variant cover by an artist who I don't know, it's new to me, an artist called Dolly. Dolly, that's right. Beautiful blue image, and you can see part of Gotham City is making Batman's cowl or his, his ear here on one side. Yeah, it's a great image. Now these two variant covers are um, coming at 4 dollars I think they're on the cardstock variants, so look out for those. Okay, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you could consider liking and subscribing, that would be awesome. Hope to see you in a future video. This is Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House, signing off for the night. Matane. Wakizashi's Tea House. Please subscribe. <laughs>